you'll see. Is everybody ready to go? Let's proclaim the greatest radio show. Welcome fans to part two of Mocking on Heaven's Door. I'm in studio with J Dash and Big Easy, and you're listening to the spread. We're gonna break down this year's NFL draft. We got a little mock draft going here, one through thirty-two. We finished up one through sixteen. We're gonna break that down for you real quick here, as soon as I can bring it up on the computer. Let's do it. All right, number one, Tampa Bay. We have them taking Jameis Winston, quarterback out of Florida State. We all know about Winston's <laughs> problem off the field. He likes to jump around and scream obscene stuff in the cafeteria. Will that hurt his draft status? I say no. Number two, Tennessee Titans. Again, taking quarterback from Oregon, Marcus Mariota. Mariota, Heisman winner this year. Uh, he struggled a little bit in that. What, what play? What bowl game was he in? Easy, you're the college guy. The championship? Yeah, yes. were they in the championship game? Yes. Uh, yeah. He did not win. No, he did not. No, he struggled in that game. Ohio State struggled. did work. That right. quarterback, he went back for a season. Well, yeah, so biggest question marks for Mariota, can he, can he run an NFL offense? Dude said he doesn't even know how to run a huddle. If they give Brandon Weeding a job, they're going to give Mariota a job. He's fine. All right. At number three, the Jacksonville Jaguars. We have him taking the number one player rated in our draft, Leonard Williams. He's a defensive end slash outside linebacker out of USC. The Jaguars have a lot of team needs. Defense was one of them. It was god-awful last year. Williams can put pressure on the opposing team's quarterback. That helps out everybody else on the defense. That helps out the offense. We'll see if Bortles can get it going this year. Number four, Oakland Raiders. They're going to go wide receiver like they always do early. Is it going to be a mistake? If they don't take this guy and take a different wide receiver, it'll be mis a mistake. Amari Cooper, wide receiver, Alabama. Washington Redskins, a lot of turmoil. Is it RG3? Is it Kirk Cousins? Is it Jay Gruden? Who likes each other? They all suck. They're taking Randy Gregory at number five. He's a defensive end slash outside linebacker out of Nebraska. He'll get that defense going a little bit, get some pressure on the opposing team's quarterback. They're still going to be garbage, but that's who they're going to take. Number six, easy, your favorite team, and Dash, you hate them, New York Jets. They need help at quarterback, cornerback, and offensive line. They're not taking either one of those. Shane Ray, outside linebacker out of Missouri. Everybody's loving him some defense this year in the first round. Best player available. He's, they say he's a chip off the old mock. <laughs> Number seven, Chicago Bears. I hate you. I do like Mike Ditka. They're taking Dave Fowler, another defensive end outside linebacker. He's from Florida. Uh, he's tall. He, he's a little bit light for defensive end, so he'll probably play outside linebacker in a 3-4, but he's got a quick first step, hoping he can help out that defense. Struggled against the run last year. Atlanta needs a pass rusher, and that's what they're going to go for. They're going to go with Vic Beasley, the end outside linebacker out of Clemson. Eli Manning and the New York Giants had a horrible season last year. They need to help keep Eli upright. He threw a whole buttload of interceptions this year. Brandon Sheriff, offensive lineman from Iowa, he's their man. St. Louis Rams, they could use a running back, but it's a little too early for that. They're going to try to keep Bradford healthy, the best way to do so. Draft an O-lineman, Andrus Pete out of Stanford's the way to go. Next best lineman, might as well take him. Maybe he'll be just as good as Orlando Pace. Minnesota Vikings, one and only bright spot on offense last year, Teddy Bridgewater. Or as Dash likes to call him, Terry Bridgewater. They're going to give him a weapon this year in Devontae Parker, wide receiver out of Louisville. That'll help him out. Maybe they'll stretch the field a little bit, open up the running game. Uh, Jarek McKinnon, that's Dash's best friend on Facebook. He, he's been hitting him up, saying he's hitting the gym. He's working out, looking for that number one spot. Parker opens the field up. Vikings win a couple more games. At number 12, the Cleveland Browns are going to need Garbage. a wide receiver to replace the suspended Josh Gordon again. It seems like two steps forward, five steps back for them. And they're, they got to go with a wide receiver to replace him. Kevin White out of West Virginia is where it's at. Mountaineer for life. Easy. The New Orleans Saints, Drew Brees is going to cost them $23 million against the cap this year and 26 next. Would you replace him soon? No. 
Well, they're not going to this year, so you must think just like Sean Payton because they're taking Danny Shelton, the best defensive tackle in the draft. He's a big six foot two, three 339 pounder. He clogs up the middle, opens up the gaps for the linebackers. It's somebody the Steelers could probably you know use a defensive tackle, but the Saints get a steal at number 13. Who's that? Danny. Danny Shelton. Danny from the mock. Danny from the mock. He's from Washington. At number 14, we have the Miami Dolphins. Now, the best part of the Dolphins are their pass defense, but they still need a corner, and they're going to go with the top one in the draft, according to us, in Trey Waynes from Michigan State. They need to get Waynes. If you're playing uh, Tom Brady twice a year, you need all the defensive backs you can. San Francisco 49ers. Step back last year, 8-8, eight eight. Harbaugh's gone, Kaepernick's garbage. They need to help protect them, get that running game going again. Frank Gore may not be there, so they need to beef up that O-line to help out them young guys. Lyle Collins, offensive tackle from LSU. At number 16, the Houston Texans are going to take the best player available, in my opinion, and the best safety in the draft in Landon Collins out of Alabama. Big time safety, uh... NFL.com's Dale Jeremiah, former scout, called him the best safety in the country. Jeremiah, don't lie. All right, so that wraps up the 16. Let's move on to 17 through 32. Jumping in. Here we go. San Diego Chargers. The Chargers and the Raiders are thinking about uh, building a stadium together in L.A. It could mix things up. One of them might get bumped to the NFC. In the meantime, San Diego needs to build a team that's worth coming to see. The way to do that is get some quality players on offense around Rivers. They need some defensive help, especially at quarterback. But uh, I think they're going to take Todd Gurley, the running back, out of Georgia. Yeah, really, Ryan Matthews never amounted to what he was supposed to be. He's hurt too often. They got good receivers around Rivers. Obviously, Gates can still get it done. They they can't stop the run, so they need defensive help, but they also can't run the ball. And Todd Gurley, to us, is the best running back in the draft, and he's the way to go here. He tore his ACL, but I still think he's the best back. So You think he'll be healthy for the season easy? Ah, or... uh, I don't know. I... Uh... I don't know if San Diego necessarily needs to take a running back here. What are you thinking? Uh, well, I'm probably thinking more along the lines of pass rushers. Pass rushers? Yeah. They they need to figure out a way to stop the run, too. But, hey, if you, he's an athlete, well, what's wrong with Ryan Matthews? I don't know. He's never healthy enough. I mean, they also have Dominic Brown out there, too. He's not the greatest running back, either. It's not a bad pick, but it, we'll see. I think this is far enough for Todd Gurley to drop. Just because he's a running back doesn't mean he should last to the second round. And I think he's going to be a beast. And I think San Diego needs another running back. I mean, the only other option really for them was defensive tackle or O-line. And the best two linemen are gone. And the best defensive tackle is gone. So, you you know, you don't want to reach for team needs. Sometimes you want to take the best available player. And at, at this position, for them... Gurley could really add to that offense and take some pressure off of Rivers. We keep saying we needed to get pressure off of Ben a little bit because he's getting older. Rivers came in at the same time. He's, he's just as old. And he's not holding up to the pressure as well as Ben Roethlisberger has in their career. All right, so let's move on to number 18, the Kansas City Chiefs, correct? The Chiefs could use a quarterback who knows how to throw a touchdown pass to a wide receiver. I'm just going to throw that out there before we dive into this. Yes, they definitely need a quarterback. They need receivers, too. There's no doubt about that. Alex Smith isn't that bad. No, I'm, he's not garbage, but... Dwayne Bow and Donnie Avery are not getting it done in Kansas City, so they definitely need a wide receiver. Yeah, the three team needs we got for them is quarterback, O-line, depending on a couple of their uh, free agents, and defensive line. Kansas City plays in a tough division. Denver loves to throw the ball a lot, so it'd be nice to be able to put some pressure on the quarterback. A lot of the top pass rushers are already gone, and with it being hard to project pass rushers into the NFL, you don't want to reach for one. At 18, I don't think there's anybody there worth taking. I think they should just go with a safer pick here and go Eric Flowers, the offensive lineman out of Miami. Scouts are raving about Flowers' potential as a left tackle because of his balance, body control, and Scouts are raving about Flowers' potential as a left tackle because of his balance, body control, and agility. And although he remains a work in progress at the position, he exhibits the blue chip traits evaluators covet and the standout edge blockers at the next level. 
Yeah, I could see them looking for defensive line, too. Like you said, they're one of the best teams at stopping the pass, but they can't stop the run either. So they really need to look at defensive line at some point in the draft, too. Easy. The Cleveland Browns are cock-mocked and loaded to blow another first-round pick. Uh, at number 12, we have them taking Kevin White out of West Virginia. They got the 19th pick from the Bills. They still need O-line help, inside linebacker help, and safety help. What do you think they're going to do? Johnny's in rehab, and they need offense. They need offense. We got them taking Kevin White with number 12 pick, wide receiver out of West Virginia. I think they're going to go with Eric Armstead, the defensive end out of Oregon. They need some help on the pass rush. They, they were not very good against the run last year either. Their defense kind of took a step back from the year before. What was that big white dude's name that came from Baltimore? Kruger? Yeah, Kr Paul Kruger. Paul Krugler or whatever. He, he took another step back. Uh, Armstead offers that steady hand at defensive end. It's uncommon to see a big athletic defensive end with Armstead's length, body control, and balance. He's just scratching the surface on his talent and potential, but he's already exhibiting dominant qualities as a classic five technique end. The Browns aren't good on the offensive side, but they ha they weren't good on the defensive side last year either. Even though they came into the last season looking like one of the better defenses in football, it didn't pan out, and they do need more pass rush. Well, they're going to get it in Armstead because he's quality. Well, easy. This team fits right in with you. The Philadelphia Eagles, they do a lot of sea mocking. They need a cornerback, a safety, an outside linebacker. The guy we have him taking at corner, he sea mocked his way right into his coach's office and choked him. So he fits right in with the fans who throw batteries at Santa Claus. I don't pay attention to Philadelphia. I don't. The Phillies, the Eagles, I don't know anything about them. How about the Flyers? The Flyers, I, I hate them anymore. I, Whatever Philadelphia needs, I have no idea. I just You're told you what they need. Guy. I didn't ask you what they need. I told you what they need. Well, well, listen, they're a pretty good offensive team. They weren't terrible at stopping the run. What they really need to do is stop the pass. They were 31st in the league against the pass last year. The guy you just said, Marcus Peters, he's the perfect player for him, not only because he's a thug, but because he's definitely the best corner in my opinion left in the draft and I wouldn't mind seeing him go to the Steelers actually and I think he can really help them next season and if he doesn't he'll just choke his coach that's why I was hoping he'd come to Pittsburgh maybe he'd choke Todd Haley please believe war number 21 team the Cincinnati Bengals uh, they competed with Pittsburgh hard this year for the division lead it came down to that final game in week 17 Pittsburgh pulled it out they need a little bit of help on the defensive side of the ball at cornerback and safety. They could also use a place kicker, which, come on, none of us really care about. Uh, I have them taking Shaq Thompson, the linebacker out of Washington. He's been projected as a linebacker or possible safety. This could be why uh, Cincinnati would be looking at him. Uh, he's that hybrid type like a Cam Chancellor. Thompson is a linebacker in the NFL, but he did split time at linebacker and tailback at Washington. He's 6'1", 228 pounds, so he's a little undersized for some defenses, but if you just want him to rush the passer or maybe be that cover two linebacker that can move around and cover people in a zone, I mean, he's fast. He's fast enough to play safety. He's definitely fast enough to play linebacker. You know, on the offensive side, I think they're pretty set, and they really need to look at defense, and I think this is the perfect type of player for him. He's that hybrid guy, and Marvin Lewis needs somebody like that on his def defense, like a difference maker. That's what made Paul Amalu so great. He made plays. He like he, The plays he made changed the courses of games and seasons for the Steelers. You need that guy out there. Actually, this is the type of player I could see the Steelers drafting if they thought he was the best player left on the board. You know... At this point, he's he's somewhat of a reach for me, and there's so many like definite needs for the Steelers. I'd be afraid to take somebody who's more of a project player with the first round pick. I think they need somebody who, I mean, we can't say anybody's a surefire guy, but they need somebody who's more of a, a surefire pick. Well, since the Steelers are up next at number 22, who is that surefire pick we're talking about? Well, we all know Pittsburgh needs help in the defensive backfield. They need a safety. They need a corner. They could use a little bit of depth along the D-line. Uh, they, they need another pass rusher, depending on what they do with Jason Worlds and Arthur Motes. The player I have him picking, if he's still here, Kevin Johnson, the cornerback out of Wake Forest. He's a solid cover corner with the length and instincts to be a solid starter in the NFL. 
He does lack elite speed or burst, but he consistently wins in coverage, and he's very savvy in his coverage. He knows how to use his body and turn his hips. He has really good footwork, so he knows the proper mechanics of the cornerback position. Yeah, really, the Steelers, on the offensive side, what do they need? A slot receiver, a backup running back, some depth at O-line. Tight end, maybe. Yeah, tight end. All this is depth. later in the draft type of things you need. First three picks should be defense, defense, defense. I believe so, too. They definitely got to focus on a defense early in the draft because really everything they need on the offense can be found later in the draft. Or a, a mid-level free eight. You can sign a backup tight end for on the cheap, you know what I mean, in free agency. All Pittsburgh is is a top 10 defense away from a Super Bowl contender. Well, listen, last year they were able to stop the run. They were sixth against the run, and we said it time and time again last year. They were holding running backs to under 100 yards, but the big problem was the big pass play, and we need someone that won't get burnt like that. And really, it caused us to be the 27th team in the league against the pass, and it really needs to be fixed before we can consider ourselves true Super Bowl contenders. Simple as that. DB, safety, anything. And, and a pass rush. A, yeah, you need a pass rush, DB, too. safety, and a pass rush. I, I would like those three yep. Those three things out of the well, first Well, they've been trying picks. to get a pass and rush I, for the last three years. And they had to bring back the aging James Harrison to get anything. And I'm not saying Harrison didn't give it his all. But he we gave need, it enough. We need what Harrison gave us three, four years ago again to be that from a, from a From a number one draft pick, though, that's asking a lot. Well, Jarvis Jones should be giving us more than two sacks a year at We're least. We're going to find out. Jo- all right. And Jones is two years since we've taken him in the first round. He has three sacks. That's not enough. Yeah, and this guy may actually already be gone before the Steelers get to pick this Kevin Johnson because he is actually a pretty high-ranked corner. Between hit, between Johnson, Waynes, and Peters, though, I wouldn't be disappointed with any of the three at the 22nd pick. I would take it, but I really, really wish Waynes would drop. I, I really want the top guy. You know well, what see, I mean? The Steelers may trade up for Collins, man. They covet that safety position. Take that too. Something's up with Shamarco. They don't really seem too sold on him. The next team, uh, number 23, the Detroit Lions. The team needs our cornerback, D-line, and place kicker again. We don't care. Uh, And Dominican Sue and Nick Fairley are both free agents, so it really depends on if they sign one or both of those, whether they're going to go after a D-lineman. If they don't sign either one of those, even if they only sign one, their defense is centered around that D-line, so I think they need to go after somebody good. Malcolm Brown, the defensive tackle out of Texas, is the best D-tackle left. He's a big guy, 6'2", 320. I don't know. He he wasn't expected to leave college early, but he got that first and second round grade, so he, he, he decided to come out. He's a solid player against the run. He gives you a decent pass rush for a big guy like that, but he's more of that gap guy similar to a Casey Hampton. Well, yeah, I mean, the their problem last year wasn't the defense it was the offense but if you don't fill these holes of sue and fairly if you don't bring both of them back it, it is going to be the defense believe it so you do need to fill that and you need to fill it early because it's hard to find d tackles late in the draft especially as good as sue and fairly and i know and and sue's been getting into a lot of trouble and they they don't really like his off the field antics but fairly has been coming into camp every year overweight and out of shape and they constantly got to badger him or bench him and sit him down and talk to him so both these players have given the organization a little bit of a headache. So if they can part ways with them, sign maybe somebody else and draft somebody somebody similar to a Malcolm Brown and not lose a step, I, I think they would go in that direction. Please believe they probably won't, though. They're not the greatest at drafting team either. No. Our number 24 team is basically the Pittsburgh Steelers on the West Coast. Uh, the Arizona Cardinals. Dash, I know you got some inside information on this pick from your Uncle Bruce. Uh, he told you over the phone, I think it was, or maybe over Skype. I'm not sure how you how you guys contact each other. Uh, they need some D-line help, outside linebacker and inside linebacker. I see Larry Foote did retire recently within the last couple days. He will be added to the team as a coach for the linebackers. The Cardinals need a quarterback 100% because Palmer is, he's like, I don't know, the scarecrow. He falls apart as soon as he gets touched every time. They're not going to get one at 24. If they can get a good quarterback in here, or if Carson Palmer can stay healthy, they have the receivers there, though, although Fitzgerald may be leaving. He is rumored to be leaving. Uh, He's owed a whole bunch of money this year, and they don't really want to pay him that much for one or two more years. 
He's going to restructure me. He might restructure. He's he's hinted at wanting to be closer to home. I'm not saying that he's coming to Pittsburgh, but well, he where has... Where does he live? In no. Pittsburgh. He only live in Pittsburgh. His family lives around Pittsburgh. Well, listen, they're going to be losing Hausler, their tight end, most likely. They have Carlson as their starting tight end. That's just an average tight end. They need a running back. They need a lot on the offensive side. And guess what? They also need a lot on the defensive side, too. They were 29th against the pass. 13th against the rush wasn't bad. But still, it's hard they have a they lot were... of work to do to become a good team, it seems like, right? But How... they were 11-5. and five. How the hell were they 11-5? They five? had the best record in the NFL at one point, at like 9-1 and one or 10-1 and one or something like that. Sorry, I... Arizona. Your team's better than I think or something. Uh, you just love them because it's your Uncle Bruce running them. I have him taking Benardrick McKinney, an inside linebacker out of Mississippi State. McKinney was a 6'3", 205-pound quarterback whenever he came to college. They converted him to inside linebacker. He is 6'5", and 249 pounds now. That's a pretty big change from when you come into college. He runs a 4'5", 40. It's 6'5", 249. Beast mode. Yeah, Shazir runs a 4'3", 40, but he's like 6'1", 210. And really, that didn't amount to anything anyway. Yeah, not in his first year anyway. Doesn't matter how fast you run. Can you play football? All right, Arizona fans, hit us up at bet underscore the spread and let us know what you think your team is going to do next season. Because when I look at your roster, I just don't see it. Oh, they're going to win their division. Don't see they think. what? I just don't see it. They don't have a quarterback. They don't have a running back. They're struggling at O-line. I mean, when you don't defense. have a quarterback, you don't have receivers either. They didn't have none of that last year. I know that's what we're saying. Well, they uh, did have. How are they going to get worse then? Well, how were they as good as they were? Well, they at least had Palmer. Is Palmer going to be playing? What's going He's on? He's supposed with him? to be back in time. And defensively, I mean, yeah, they won eleven games, but they were terrible against the pass, and they were mediocre against the run. <laughs> mediocre. Okay, so Arizona, don't even draft anybody, dude. You're beat. <laughs> Arizona, just give up now. Number 25 is the Carolina Panthers. They need pass rush help like a lot of other teams do. They need some offensive line help, maybe a cornerback or two. Carolina's team is an enigma to me. Two years ago, they were awesome. Last year, they were beat, but then they became good again. They made the playoffs. Did they win a playoff game even, maybe? I can't remember. I don't think so. Uh, Cam Newton's a great quarterback. The running backs can't stay healthy. Nobody can protect Newton. I well, think they listen, need... Go ahead. Their biggest problem last year, and we we said it over and over again, was their offensive line. Their offensive line was terrible. That was their biggest problem. They couldn't keep Cam Newton from lying on his back. The running backs couldn't get going at all. Jonathan Stewart's a better running back than what he's been playing like the past season or two because this offensive line is just not good. I don't think they didn't win the playoff game, but they smoked and ran at a win. Oh, division. that's what it was. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think they need to take TJ Clemmings, the offensive lineman out of pit. Uh, he was actually a defensive end turn pass protector. He's a tantalizing talent with big-time potential. He's light on his feet. Uh, he displays a lot of body control. He did have a disappointing senior bowl. It exposed a little bit of his limitations at offensive tackle, but he's still new to the position. He's a guy that can learn, and when you're big and fast like he is, that suits their offensive line very well because Cam Newton's always moving around. You need guys that can keep their head on a swivel and keep up with him. You can't just have that big, heavy, slow, road grader type offensive lineman because Newton's going to make one cut and be gone and he's not even going to know what to do. Well, that's just the start of it. TJ Clemmings, when I sit, when I hear that name and when I s just see it, I, I feel like he's a Carolina Panther. I think this is going to happen and that's just the start of it though. They need more than just uh, TJ Clemmings. They need a couple different guys on the O-line. Another team that needs O-line help, the Baltimore Ravens. Their whole team was mirrored in controversy last year with Ray Rice punching his wife in the face in a, a hotel or casino elevator. Uh, they, they did manage to make the playoffs and beat the Steelers. So, well, listen, I, mean, I can't say too much about them. In the fall of Ray Rice, though, Justin Forsett came up big. He was a very good running back last season, but from my understanding, he is a free agent, correct? Yeah, their team needs our pass rush, running back, and O-line. So I'm thinking instead of signing for a set, 
for a lot of money. They Yeah, they go spend the money elsewhere and draft the running back in the first round in Melvin Gordon, the Wisconsin running back, who some believe is better than Gurley. I personally do not. Yeah, if running backs weren't so devalued in the NFL, Gordon would be even higher on our list. He, he broke the FBS record for rushing yards in a game, didn't he? He ran for 408 yards one time on 25 carries. Beast mode. Wisconsin won that game 59-24. Yeah, on the defensive side, they really got to work on their pass defense. Yeah, their cornerbacks weren't very good, and their, their safety struggled. They're a little bit old, a little weathered back there. There's no real defensive back that I would take at this position. Exactly. 26, when you're getting the 26 to 32 range, you really are taking the best athlete available. And depending on some trades and whether people slide down or not. That's how good teams stay it, late in the draft. It's hard to be too selective. You take selective. the best player and you win with them. That's right. You make it work. I mean, you have the best players, you should win. A team that took a major step forward last year winning was the Dallas Cowboys. I didn't even think they were going to make the playoffs, and then they go in and win their division. You know, they really, they were a good offensive team last year. Tony Romo had a big year. They have Des Bryant on the outside. He is a free agent. I'm guessing they will find a way to keep him. Uh, DeMarco Murray, he's up, correct? Yeah. They got to find a way to bring him back if they can. But really, their offense wasn't the problem. Their problem was their pass defense. And really, their rush defense, they ended up eighth in the league, but they were nothing special themselves. Well, their boots are made for mocking. That's just what they'll do. They're going to mock their way all the way to sell mock four. The Cowboys need some defensive back help, especially a corner. They need some D-line help, maybe a tight end. Uh, pass rusher I was looking at is Alvin Bud Dupree. He's a defensive end slash outside linebacker out of Kentucky. He's an explosive, powerful athlete. He has a background in basketball. He had been productive at Kentucky. His tape doesn't always do him do his potential justice. He needs to continue as a pass rusher, but his, his physical traits are definitely undeniable. He just needs to work on his technique a little bit, his uh, the way he uses his hands and his footwork. You got to be explosive off the line and hit the offensive lineman before they hit you, especially when you're the smaller of the two players. Well, I'll tell you this. If next season, well, let's say they do draft this Bud Dupree, and next season the Steelers and the Cowboys play in the Super Bowl for the fourth time, I think if, if they matched up, Le'Veon Bell would smoke Bud. Please believe. You keep on mocking, but you can't come in. The Denver Broncos are the epitome. Well, Peyton Manning, I guess, is the one who keeps on mocking and ain't getting in because he can't buy himself another Super Bowl. He doesn't know if he's coming back. Denver he, needs help he, on the D-line. He's, he's mocking the line right now. <laughs> he looks like the mocking dead out there. <laughs> <laughs> the Denver Broncos need D-line help, linebacker help, and either a tight end or wide receiver, depending on which one of the Thomases they decide to sign. Which one you think they'll take easy, Demarius or Julius? Demarius. You take him over Julius? Yeah. Why well, would too? And that leaves Max Williams, the tight end out of Minnesota, is the perfect pick for Denver. He's not really a household name, but offensive coordinators around the NFL are salivating over this kid's potential. Uh, he's a between the hashes playmaker. Slobbering. He's an exceptional. Ex He's an exceptional pass catcher with strong hands and ball skills. He'll remind ball skills. He has ball skills. He'll remind some evaluators of a young Jeremy Shockey on the perimeter. And Shockey was a good player. I picked him up on Madden Football every time when I had PlayStation 2. Yeah, really. If they're going to lose Julius Thomas, that, that's the best thing they can do is bring in another tight end that can step up in that role to complement Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders on the outside and keep this offense elite for Peyton Manning. Yeah, I mean, do you guys want to pay millions of dollars to Thomas or pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to Williams to do the same thing? And let's not forget that Anderson was a beast last season for Denver after all their running backs went down. Yeah, and they're just going to keep running the ball even more because Peyton Manning's arm is turning into ramen noodles. Too bad he doesn't invest in that company. Our number 29 team, the Indianapolis Colts, they uh, they need a backup quarterback, not early in the draft, obviously. Uh, they need some defensive help at linebacker and safety. The guy we're looking at is Eddie Goldman, a defensive tackle or defensive end out of Florida State, depending on what style of defense he's playing in. 
he helped Florida State uh, win early and win often. They made it into the championship series. They made the playoff, right? Easy. Yeah, championship game. Oh, they were no, they didn't make the game. AFC championship game. No, Florida State. We're talking about Florida or? State. Yeah. Oh no. They Easy. made the playoffs in college the, playoff. Yeah. In the BCS. Okay. Yeah. Goldman was a big part of that defense for Florida State. Yeah, the the problem with the Colts last season, they had a little bit of trouble in the run game, but high on Heron came out of nowhere late in the season, and he looked pretty good. I still don't think he's a long-term answer for him, so they may want to get something at running back too, but defense was definitely their downside last season, and they were 18th against the run. They got gouged against the run against the Patriots every time they played them in the last two years. So if they want to compete with, you know, a team like that, every time they lose a game, it's to New England. You know, in New England, they're getting hammered against the run. You got to stock up. You got to get these bigger guys. You got to make a difference. They already got the quarterback. Luck makes everybody on the offense better. So you can spend a little less money on the offensive side. I'm not saying go out and blow big money on the defensive players if they're garbage, but you got to build a defense. If you give Andrew Luck a top 10 defense, imagine what the Colts could do, right. especially in that division. Who's in that division? Nobody. They got Houston, they have no quarterback. They got the Jaguars, they have no team. And they got Tennessee, who has maybe two or three good players. Yeah, division's garbage. It's the Colts for the taking for the next few years, at least. that. The Green Bay Packers, a little bit of a disappointment in the loss to uh, Seattle last year. They're number 30. Uh, They need inside linebacker help, defensive line help, and tight end help. The Packers are uh, another strange team. Every year... They're really good. Then the next year, they're kind of good. Their defense is going up and down a little bit. If they could add to that defense, help Aaron Rodgers, uh, they may be re-signing Randall Cobb. I don't know if they want to give him $9 million a year, though. Uh, Yeah, their offense is set. They were 11th in rushing yards, 8th in passing yards. And really, their pass defense looked pretty good last year, too. They were 10th against the pass. Their one big problem was stopping the run, and I think... This guy right here, Paul Dawson, is the answer. Inside linebacker out of TCU. Uh, He was really productive in college. He has a real good nose for the ball. He averaged a tackle every 5.3 snaps, and he either caused or recovered a total of eight turnovers during the 2014 season. It's the best way to stop the run, bring in a guy like that that's by the ball every play. He can play inside in a two-gap scheme, but he's more of a natural fit at the will linebacker spot. If Green Bay, I mean, come on, they're already going to win their division. Detroit's, they're the only other team that really contends. Minnesota, eh. Chicago, eh. You got Aaron Rodgers, you're a Super Bowl contender. You stock up on that defense. Pretty sure Dom Capers is still up there. He'll coach this kid up. They've had good luck with linebackers early. A.J. Hawk, Clay Matthews, uh... I yeah, Hawk was, one's name. Hawk was okay. Clay Matthews was the beast. Here's another one. Casey Matthews, I think, is up there now. They're doing good things with him. Mm. They moved him inside. All right, so that moves us to number 31, the Seattle Seahawks. The two almost, Super Bowl teams. Yeah, the two Super Bowl teams, Seahawks almost repeating. What was their one biggest problem this year? It definitely wasn't defense, although they may have a little trouble bringing back everyone on that defense. They still got to look to find a way to correct their passing game. Yeah, they need a wide receiver who's not going to get jammed at the line and cause Wilson to throw an interception to lose the Super Bowl for him. Yeah, and the guy we have penciled in here at 31. DGB. Yeah, is a guy I really like. He has the last name of two Pro Bowl wide receivers That's in the it. game right now, so that means he is going to be twice as good. He's the love child of A.J. Green and Odell Beckham's menage a trois <laughs> with some random chick after a big game one day. Yeah, but I actually do like this guy, <laughs> wide receiver out of Oklahoma. I think he's the perfect fit for Seattle, and he's really going to help Russell Wilson in several ways. Yeah, uh, Green Beckham, he's an ultra-talented pass catcher. He's the biggest wild card in the 2015 class because of the risk versus reward question. Uh, The scouts, his playmaking potential is there, but his character concerns are also there. On the field, matchup nightmare. Size, athleticism, ball skills, has it all. Off the field, he just has a a, a lot of questions. Staying out late nights, coming into meetings late. Uh, he, He doesn't seem like... He's putting in the hard work. 
But if anywhere there's a team where they can take a guy in like that, make him feel like part of the group, part of the team, it's supposed to be Pete Carroll and all in the family. He loves everybody. They let Marshawn Lynch tell the media to go bleep themselves pretty much every time he talks. So they can bring this guy in, let him be late to meetings. As long as he catches touchdowns, who cares? Yeah. It didn't work out for Percy Harvin in Seattle. Maybe it'll work out for this guy. I think Percy Harvin wanted to fight Russell Wilson. Uh, he has a headache. He didn't want to fight. It's brutal. He probably wanted a nap, little biatch. And that moves on to our number 32 team, the New England Patriots, who will probably figure out a way to trade up for four more first-round picks somehow. Because they cheat. Board mock empire. Yeah, that's board mock empire. You're you're dead on there, easy. They can go to H E double mocky sticks. Yeah, F them. They need a wide receiver, a D line, and maybe a running back if they don't re sign Ridley. I'm not sure if Blunt's still there or not yet. But we got him This is a little Devin bit of a reach Funchies. here. Yeah, Funchies. Funchies. Say the name again. Funchies. Yeah, it, it's a little bit of a reach. He's actually ranked a little lower on the receivers. He could fall to the second round. But uh, I don't know. I think this is just someone. A type of player the New England Patriots like, and they will get the most out of them like they do out of everybody because they know the plays before they happen. He, he played for the Wolverines, so he has Michigan ties, so Brady's going to like him. Fun he's, chess. He's six foot five, 230 pounds. Fun chess. If you flexed him out to one side and fun you chess. flexed Gronk out to the other side. Fun chess. You would have a lot of fun chess playing offense because it's a matchup nightmare. What team has two linebackers or a linebacker and a safety that could could cover both of those players out on the perimeter? Having yeah, having him on the outside, Laguerre Blunt at running back, he probably has the funchies. He has the funchies. He's he's high as hell, man. Him and Bud Dupree were sharing that bud. Please believe. So the that news? wraps up our first round mock, correct? You better mock and believe yourself. Mock one up for the good guys. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you guys for coming in. Dash, thank you for sitting here and doing all these hours worth of hard research. I know how much you love doing that. Mm -hmm. Fans, thank you for sticking with us. We know these were a long two segments. You guys can follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to that YouTube channel. Dash, you can go mock yourself. Cocked, mocked, and ready to roll. Kick mocks. <laughs>